You're going to see me build from scratch a full multi-shot anime scene with shots ranging from easy, medium, and hard difficulty levels. And we're going to be doing this all step by step so that you can take all of the same methods and easily use them in your own projects. So what type of scene should we make? I've been watching a lot of Gundam Wing recently, and you know what's cooler than a Gundam? A Gundam rising from the ocean as the water drips from it. Let's make that. But before we can animate anything, before we create our first image we need to solve for the biggest problem in ai filmmaking and that's consistency styles drift characters change mechs get redesigned the scenes don't match if you can't lock down reference images everything falls apart later this is the most important step that we will do today first thing we're going to do is build our creative anchors those are our reference images that we will use to make sure that every shot stays consistent so let's go ahead and build them today we're going to be building our reference images in mid journey now i I love mid journey because it creates super good images you don't need to use mid journey if you don't want to any platform that can create um, a solid image will work now before we start creating our reference images on mid journey the first thing that we're going to need are prompts to create these images prompting for mid journey can be a little bit overwhelming but don't worry i have a amazing custom gpt that will make this super easy for you shout out to our boy gilbertry here gilbertry has the best mid journey prompting gpt this is not my own this is his i will link to his channel as well as his gpt below but this is something that i use in every single one of my projects and it creates super good mid journey scenes so the first thing that we are looking to do is create a setting for our shot we want to keep the setting consistent as well as the characters within it so let's start with the setting let's start by giving the gpt some details about what we're looking for so you can see here what i did i asked for hey i'm looking for a prompt for a mountain setting a canyon in an anime style with a 1990s anime feel that overlooks the ocean Ocean. And you can see here that the GPT gave us back four different styles of prompts. Let's go ahead and try this first one. I think this one looks pretty good. I'm going to copy and paste it from the GPT. I'm going to go into the top of mid journey here. I'm going to paste it in as is. One of the things here I'll change in the settings is that I'm going to make sure that I'm generating in a 16 by nine ratio. If you were generating this in a different ratio or such as maybe for mobile, you could do it that way. I'm going to leave mine 16 by nine. Now I'm going to go in, I'm going to paste this prompt in. I'm going to hit submit now the first results that it gave me are beautiful settings you know we want that canyon by the ocean so that our character can look look out over it before the gundam arises from the ocean however these are all a little bit too oil painting for my style i do really like this style but i'm looking for more of that 1990s anime style so what we're going to do is we're going to change a few things about the prompt here we're going to change our oil painting we're going to remove all mentions of the oil painting from the prompt and I'm also going to use a style reference in mid journey by using a style reference. What you can do is you can go to Google and search for your favorite anime. I'm going to use Vinland saga. And what we can do is we can use any of these images as a style reference for mid journey. I chose this image with our character with sort of the knife in his mouth, and I'm going to drag and upload it into mid journey or copy and paste it from Google. And I'm going to set this as my style reference. Now I'm going to hit generate again, and you can see here that it gave us a much more anime type of style that what I'm looking for here. This is a number one tip for mid journey. Use style references to guide the type of style that you're looking to create. So I've got a beautiful image here for our setting. One thing, however, I don't like about this particular image. If we look here at the image is that it has some trees in the background as well as like some rocks here. I really imagine our character walking up to the end of this and then the mech rising in front of him or out in the distance. I want it to look like the water is directly is right near the cliff. I'm going to pop into Photoshop really fast and I am going to go in and highlight the areas that I want to remove. So I think I really don't want this tree here. I want the water to look like it's right there. I'm going to remove that tree and I'm going to remove that tree as well. And I'm literally just going to hit it with a super simple remove. Boom. And I think this looks perfect. One of the tips I have for you all today is that be comfortable using Photoshop or tools like Photoshop to make minor edits to your images. Part of being a creator here with AI is not relying on AI to do every single thing for you. So we've got our setting now, but the next thing we want to create is our character. So let's go back into our GPT here of Gilbertry and let's ask for a young anime man, 18 years old, wearing a green sleeveless shirt and he has brown hair and we've gotten a few prompts here. I'm going to take the first one and I think this is the one we're going to go with. Let's go ahead and move on to our last character that we need our reference image and that is our mech. I'm 
I'm going to use the same exact thing to get the mech. Now, we got these four images here, but what, what comes to mind immediately? These don't look like a Gundam. These look more like a Pacific Rim. What are we going to do? Let's go back into our GPT and let's paste in an image of a Gundam. Death Scythe is probably my favorite Gundam. And so I'm going to go in, I'm going to copy an image of Death Scythe in here, and I'm going to ask, can you adjust the style of Gundam to look more like this? This GPT is not creating the images for us. It is now adjusting the prompt. So I'm going to use this new prompt that it's giving me. I'm going to go in, I'm going to copy this one in and hit generate and boom. Now we have Max that look much more like what we wanted here. I think I'm going to use this one in particular. This looks exactly what I'm looking for. And if you know, for all these reference images we've created so far, they're all in a very similar anime style. Okay. Now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go back into Photoshop and we're going to remove the background from all of these reference images so far so that they look something like this. You don't have to use Photoshop. You can do this in any type of tool you'd like to, but the end result should be something like this with your reference images to where you have the reference image here, our setting. We've got our character here on a white background and our mech here on a white background. It's important that you don't just have the reference image as like a PNG file, which is just the character in a transparent background. You want that white background in the same aspect ratio that you are creating your rest of your anime. That's incredibly important. So boom, we have our character, we have our reference images, we have our setting, all the things that we need to move on to creating our scene. And now we can move on to the next part, which is going into Nano Banana, creating some of our initial images for our first shots, and then going into Kling to create our first simple establishing shots. Let's go in and do that now. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to want to start to create our first images for the shot. I think the first shot that we should start with is really like an establishing shot of our entire scene. But if you can imagine, the only image that we have of our scene right now is this close up. How are we going to get a wider shot? We're going to go into Nano Banana now. We're going to take this image and we're going to create an establishing shot that incorporates all of the elements of this image while keeping it consistent. So I'm going to copy this image here from our reference images. I'm going to go into Nano Banana. If we access Nano Banana at gemini.google.com, going to hit the Nano Banana here. I am now editing images. I'm going to drop in my initial background image here and I'm going to give it a prompt that looks just like this saying, I need a high up bird's eye view of this scene for an establishing shot. Pull the camera way back to make the current scene look small and let's go in and see what it gives us. And boom, this is the type of image that it came out with. Like this is the power of Nano Banana guys. That's our exact scene, but now we have a different shot. This is how we're going to start our anime with the clouds moving in the sky. This is beautiful. This is amazing. You could not do this a few months ago and it created so many issues. Use Nano Banana. It's the one thing you take away from this video. So maybe next we're going to see a shot of our character's boots as he walks towards that edge before his mech appears. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Nano Banana. I'm going to have image one, which is our character here, and image two, which is our setting. Nano Banana references images in order here. So the first image you upload will be one. The second image that you upload will be two. So I'm saying I need an image that is a close-up of this man's boots as he walks towards the edge of the cliff in image two, and I'm going to hit submit. And you can see here that it gave us this beautiful image of him walking towards towards the edge of the cliff. This is exactly what we are looking for. Now we're going, I think for the last image in our easy shots here, I'm thinking like an extreme close up of the man's face. And boom, this is the, what we ended up getting from Nano Banana. This is exactly what we wanted here. And now we have three distinct shots. Let's take it into Kling. Kling, I think is the best platform for you to go in and work with different types of shots like this. I think it does nice, simple camera movements incredibly effectively and really allows you a supreme level of control as a director. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to drop a simple prompt here for our establishing shot. I'm just going to ask for the clouds to move in the sky with the camera fixed, maintaining that 2D anime style. And boom, this is what it got us, exactly what we're looking for. Nothing too fancy, just the clouds moving in the sky. Beautiful establishing shot. Now, next, what we did is we want to go in and we want to take the image of our man walking. And what we want to do is we want the camera to track with his feet as he walks towards the edge. We don't want him to walk out of the scene. We want it to be one of those dramatic close-up cameras that follows. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to go back into Kling. I'm going to make sure that I'm using the 2.5 turbo model. And I'm going to go in, paste the image, 
and asks for a simple prompt, the man walks towards the edge of the cliff slowly with the camera tracking behind him. And this is exactly what we were looking for. The man's walking towards the edge of the cliff, exactly what we were looking for. And now next we're going to go in and we're going to ask for the man's head bounces up and down gently as his hair blows in the wind as he walks with the camera being fixed. And you can see here, it gave us pretty much that exactly. This is, so now we have all of our initial shots to start our scene. Okay, so let's move on to our second stage of shots which are our medium difficulty and this is the shot that really begins to make your project feel like real filmmaking instead of just like several isolated shots we're going to take shots that move and use first and end frame to make consistent and smooth camera movements with complete control over every single part so we really want the man after he's been walking we've got that close-up of his face to pause at the end of the cliff and then we want to zoom out and really show um the epicness of the entire scene so we need an image of the man standing by the edge of the cliff how are we going to get that well let's go back and let's grab our reference images here let's grab our first reference image into nana banana and then let's grab our cliff image and let's go in and let's say can you take the man from image one and have him standing out and looking over the edge of the cliff in image two and i'll hit enter and this is the image that we got this was exactly what we're looking for so we've got our first keyframe and now we want a shot of it zoomed out so let's go back into mid journey and let's go ahead and create and let's go ahead and create that next step with nano banana using the same exact steps and i got this result where i asked the camera to zoom out and give us a view of that entire establishing scene so i'm going to go back into cling here and we're going to go in and we're going to make sure we're on 2.5 turbo and now we're going to use our first and end frame i am going to use this image as my first frame i'm going to copy it in and we're going to ask for the camera to slowly pull back to reveal more of the scene, the man's clothes and hair blow gently in the wind, 2D anime style. And we're gonna go ahead and hit generate. So now we have complete control over what both the beginning of the scene will look like as well as the end. And let's see what kind of results we're getting. So this looks pretty good, but after a couple generations, one of the things I'm starting to notice that even after asking the man to sit still, he's taking a few steps back and this is really beginning to bother me. Um, now, what you could do if this was a serious project and this was, you know, your most most important shot what you could do is you could go back into nano banana try to move him ex to the exact location you could move him around in photoshop if needed however what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to improvise here i'm actually going to switch our end frames so that instead of the, the, the so the camera is actually going to push in and then he can be stepping forward so i'm going to change the prompt to say the camera slowly pushes in on the man as he walks towards the edge of the clip that way i can naturally use sort of the disadvantage to my advantage to have him moving forward just as we'd like and so let's go ahead and see what those results look like perfect so this has now completed our medium shot we've perfectly matched our earlier frames and this is really going to allow us to create our final reveal which is going to be the hardest shot of the entire episode to where we're going to have our gundam now emerge from the scene in the background from the water and we're going to want the water to reveal him and we're going to want it to look super cool so let's go ahead and move on to create our last shot now for the hard shot we're going to want this gundam Gundam to appear out of our last scene. So if I think of the images we're going to need to create in mid journey, I'm going to need to use this image as our first frame. And then I'm going to need to create a second frame, which has this Gundam coming out of the water. Now, how are we going to do this? Oh, that's right. You guessed correctly. We're going to go into nano banana. So I'm going to take our first image here, which is our Gundam. And I'm going to go in, I'm going to copy him over. And then I'm going to take the last frame of our last generation, which was our man walking out. And I'm going to ask a very simple prompt here. Can you insert can you insert the mech in the water beyond where the man is looking out to? And I'm gonna hit enter. And after a couple different um, generations and iterations uh, working with Nano Banana, this is the image I was able to get. So now guys, we have our first frame for this last shot, with the, which was the end frame of our shot that we created last. So we're gonna have one long consistent movement. And now we have our last frame, which now has the mech having arisen from the ocean. And we're going to hold that camera, maybe have it shake a little bit um, as he comes out. So let's go back into cling. So now we have our starting frame and we're going to ask for something like the camera shakes as the mech emerges from the ocean in the distance, water running down its body. And we're just going to use a simple prompt, everyone. Very simple, as you can see on the screen here. And we're going to hit generate. And after a couple tries, everyone, this is the shot that we're going to go with here. We ask the camera to shake a little bit. And so we have the mech emerging in the distance completely consistent 
in our vision and we have our boy here standing on the screen with his with his clothes blowing and that really concludes our hard shot one of the key things that we've done here that i really want to call out is that when you start to be able to chain end frames together from using like okay we had the last shot where the camera pushed in and our boy was standing on the cliff we use that as the first frame as the for our next shot we could then use this shot as the first frame for another generation this is how you create scenes that go well beyond just like the five or ten second limit of generations i get asked that a lot with my videos so those are all of our shots let's go ahead and see what all this looks like edited together i'm going to go in and i am going to add some sound to the video i'm going to go in and add a couple extra shots using these same exact um, techniques that we've discussed so far just to round it out now let's go ahead and check how it all looks right now Awesome. Well, everyone, I really hope this, this video provided a lot of value for you. This is how you create these types of complex shots with characters that you imagine. This gives you complete control over everything. Don't be afraid to improvise as well. Certain things might come up as you're creating and you need to adjust. Totally fine. Sometimes the AI does something wild. Run with it. Change what you were looking for while keeping true to your overall consistent story. Interested to see the types of anime you can create leveraging all of these techniques in this video? What's an example of the best video generators to use? Go ahead and check out this video where I rank all of the latest ones so that you can choose the best one. That said, be sure to drop a like on the video, sub to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you all on the next one. Peace.